Hi everybody. Tonight I will be going over the cleaning steps that I use to get my armor away from that hammer mark finish and to a nice polished finish just like this. Now before we start I just want to reiterate that safety is really important and you will need to use all the proper safety gear like this when we're polishing there's going to be particles everywhere, there's going to be dust, it's going to get into your sinuses and you're going to get sick and it sucks. And just to show you how serious safety is, I recently cut myself really bad and um, it was because I wasn't careful. See, this is what can happen if you're not careful. Okay, so with that serious safety moment out of the way, I will show you what I use. Now, there's different finishes that you can get on your armor. This is one type of finish. It's not done really smoothly. You can do it better than this. The reason it's done as roughly as this is because I intended to, to get this to this kind of finish. So you don't need to focus too much on sanding it evenly because you're going to polish it down later. Now, the advantages of having something polished like this is it helps prevent rust buildup because there's less imperfections in the surface of the metal where the rust can take purchase. So you'll have to keep it really clean like this. Um, it scratches very easily. Well, it scratches just as easily as this, but the scratches show up a lot more prominently on this kind of finish. Now with the satin finish it doesn't require as much maintenance but you have to really oil it and make sure you keep it clean and dry because it's going to rust a lot easier. Now three steps of cleaning armor. First step is sanding your armor. This is to get those initial hammer marks out of your metal surface. Now you would have seen me use this flap disc quite a bit. Um, the proper way of doing it is using a much bigger flap disc. Um, normally it's about double the thickness and about 200 millimeters in diameter. Those are mounted to bench mounted buffing machines. I unfortunately don't have one. That's why I'm going through this whole laborious process to get my armor to a nice shiny look. First of all, you use this get the initial hammer marks out, deep scratches out. So a few passes of this over your armor, you get to this kind of finish. This is perfectly fine to start with, to go on with hand sanding. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why do I sand by hand? And as I just mentioned, I do not have a buffing machine. I've got a little bench grinder that sucks. It's really too weak to mount big, flap disc buffing wheels on. So one of the theories that I like to prescribe to in life is that if you don't have money to do something, but you have time, you can do the same thing on a lower budget. It's just gonna be a bit more exercise in the process. So after I've done this, I start sanding the metal with ordinary sandpaper of various grits. So I start off with 120 grit on the flat disc. After that I move to a 180, then a 220, 320 and then a 800 grit. Now the point of each pass of grit of sandpaper is to get the previous passes scratches out. You want to work in the same direction. If you're going to start overlapping the grain at which you sand, then you're just going to make it difficult for yourself. If you don't go in one direction, you're not really polishing. You're just going to make the metal dull. Now, before I start with hand sanding, I like to use this trusty metal pipe that I use for basically everything. And I take a few of these which are neodymium magnets and you stick that to the metal pipe stick your armor to that and all of a sudden without any effort at all 
your piece of metal is quite reasonably secured to this pipe. Now you can use a few more and there you go. As you can see it is on really tough and because the magnets are on the inside of the plate it doesn't scratch or do anything to the outside of the plate. So what happens as you're busy sanding is obviously it's little metal particles that come off and those little metal particles will accumulate around the area where the magnet is right underneath the plate. Not a problem, just every few passes with the sandpaper, just wipe that off with a piece of cloth. Easy as that. So, go from low grit to high grit. On every pass of a certain grit, make sure you get all the previous marks of that previous grit out. Because if you don't, the next grid, the finer grid, will not get rid of those scratches. It might, but it's literally going to take you four times as long to get that out. Now, as you go on, you eventually come to an almost mirror finish. You don't have to be really meticulous about getting a mirror finish on this with the sandpaper itself. You can do that if you get up to a thousand grit thereabout. I sometimes like to do it, but it still won't be perfect. When you start getting to that mirror finish with sandpaper, the slightest weird movement of your hand causes a little mark on it. It's not a train smash, but it's, you don't really want it. Now that is where we get to the final part of the process, which also takes forever, but it doesn't take as much muscle power. So, that is what these are for. Now I said before I don't have a butting machine. I do, however, have a little bench grinder, 150 watt bench grinder. Now the recommended size of a buffing machine is a 750 watt minimum. So as you can tell, that is quite a bit bigger than what I've actually got and they're expensive. But this is a linen mop as you would use on a buffing machine. Now this is what you use to get it to this kind of polish. So first off, I use a gray buffing compound this is what they call a cutting compound. It's specifically designed for stainless steel and if it works on stainless steel, it'll work on my mild steel just fine. This is to remove the first round of scratches left from the sandpaper. Now, it'll give you a reasonable mirror finish, but it's not perfect, it's a little bit easy. And that is what this compound is for and this softer linen mop. Uh, it's literally a case of as the mop spins, you put the compound onto the mop, put the compound down, and press your metal up against the mop. And you slowly work the metal all over the surface of the mop and the mop all over the surface of the metal until you eventually see yourself in that metal. Now, one of the things, especially if you're we're going to use a bigger buffing machine and things like that, um, what they generally say is when you're pressing the metal up against the mop, now let's say the mop is spinning like this, and you're pressing the metal up like this, you will want to move the metal. Now, if you move your piece of armor in the direction of rotation, you will get a better finish. It digs less into the metal, and gives more of a polish. If you move it up against the direction of rotation, then you will get more of a satin finish because the compound digs deeper into the metal. Now, that's not really the case with my crappy little bench grinder. That's more a case with bigger motors and things like that. Cleaning is one of those parts of the armor making process that takes the most time but is the most rewarding in the end and if you have followed all the steps before the cleaning process like planishing and forming properly if you did your planishing correctly then it'll really start to show when you start polishing your armor the opposite is also true if you haven't planished properly if you've still got horrible hammer marks and grooves and just horrible things in your armor, just defects, that will really, really start to shine once you start polishing. You will see every single error that you've made in that armor if you 
polish it to a mirror finish. So it's very, very, very important. Follow all the steps and be meticulous with your work before you get to the cleaning process. Make sure you're finished with the forming process before you start cleaning. Once again, if you like my videos, hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button. Please hit that little bell icon next to subscribe if you want to receive notifications of my videos. YouTube is really limiting the amount of notifications that goes out lately, especially if people aren't clicking on the little notification button. Thanks a lot. Another interesting thing you can do with neodymium magnets is you can use your chainmail as a tool harness.